Tenant was written and directed by Christopher Nolan, and it's here to hopefully save theaters around the world as they begin to reopen. I saw this at a press screening. Only five people were permitted in the theater. The theater was closed at the time. Everyone wore masks. There was hand sanitizer all over the place. It was my first time going to a traditional theater since March when I saw Bloodshot. I've been to a drive-in this summer, but this is the longest span of time that I haven't been in a real theater since I was an infant. It was very surreal to go see a movie like this on a big screen. Armed with only one word, tenant, and fighting for the survival of the entire world, a protagonist journeys through a twilight world of international espionage on a mission that will unfold in something beyond real time. I just read the official plot synopsis on IMDb because it's the easiest way to summarize the plot of the film without spoilers. If I were to actually go into the plot of this movie right now, it would take the length of a normal review just to discuss that. This is a very complex movie. Despite its attempts to explain itself to us at, at multiple times, the film is a little inaccessible at first. For the first hour or so of the movie, you're sort of running to catch up to figure out what this world is, who our hero is, and what exactly his place in this world is. It's about halfway through the movie that things become clearer. Nolan's a big fan of mystery. He wants to have the audience ask a lot of questions. He likes keeping things from you as you watch the movie for a long time. And he respects you in that way, hoping that you go on that journey with him. And he continues that with Tenant. Tenant is a film that a lot of people will love, but perhaps a similar amount of people will not love. It's a very inaccessible movie at times, especially compared to Nolan's other films. Even films like Inception, where people came out saying, I don't understand that movie, I was confused by it. I remember being like, why? It's very simple. It's very easy to follow. Tenant is considerably more complex than Inception. And it really is going to take multiple viewings to truly appreciate the movie. Because there's so much that's hidden throughout the course of the movie. And so much that that flies by very quickly. Very important insert shots, for instance, that happened very quickly early on in a scene that later in the movie really means something for the characters. I respect a filmmaker who takes the amount of studio money that he does to make these audacious movies that make people scratch their heads. Tenant is not Nolan's best film by a long shot, but I really liked it. I really enjoyed watching this film. The spectacle is awe-inspiring. Visually, it's miraculous. The things he's able to accomplish in camera with very little visual effects is really impressive. People are moving forwards in a scene while others in the scene are moving backwards. Sometimes people who are moving forwards and moving backwards at the same time fight or are engaged in a highway chase with one another. To watch that occur on the screen is fabulous. It's incredible to see. This movie is visually stunning in every way. The highlights being that fight scene that I mentioned, although it is not as remarkable as the hallway fight scene in Inception, as well as a building that seems to reassemble itself while also blowing up as the camera tilts upwards. Really incredible stuff. With Tenet, Nolan continues his interest, perhaps even obsession, with time and the manipulation of it. In the past, his films have often featured non-linear storylines. Here he takes this a step further by featuring objects and even people who are all moving in different directions and spaces of time within one frame. The film calls it inversion. I won't go any further into it than that. We'll keep it non-spoiler. You guys saw all of these images in the trailers anyway. The acting is also strong. John David Washington is really good in the film, as is Robert Pattinson. Elizabeth Debicki is also very good in the film. All of the acting all around is very good. Kenneth Branagh plays a villainous character, and he's really big in the movie. Like, he's really chewing the scenery, but he worked for me. Uh, if you want to go there, go there. And he goes there, and I, I think he's really good in the film. Nolan's usual composer collaborator, Hans Zimmer, couldn't do this film because of his work on Dune, and so Ludwig Gerenson from Ryan Coogler's films like Black Panther and Creed replaced him, and he's really fucking good. I've loved all of this man's scores. He, he won the Oscar for Black Panther. I think he's one of our new best talents when it comes to music. Honestly, you could probably watch this and think Hans Zimmer did it without knowing. A lot of the music does sound as if it has a reversed quality to it, which matches obviously, you know, some of the spectacle on the screen. Speaking of sound though, Nolan continues this thing he's been doing ever since Dark Knight Rises where dialogue seems to be the bottom of the mix and sound effects and score are above it. So there are many scenes where I honestly didn't know what people were saying. And I saw this at a Cinemark XD 
So this is a massive theater with really state-of-the-art sound. And I'm not sure why he does that. It's like ever since Tom Hardy was Bane, he was like, I, I like when people don't quite understand what everyone's saying all the time. Interstellar had very loud music, and you can watch the film multiple times and get more out of it, but Nolan likes to do a thing in all of his movies where his characters take leisurely strolls through very picturesque environments, and they usually give expository dialogue during these scenes. It happens a lot in Inception. Um, happens quite often in Tenet, and oftentimes that score, which as I said is wonderful, is often blaring during these sequences, which makes dialogue a little difficult to hear. Also, characters are speaking very fast and very quick. Tenet is technically marvelous and conceptually fascinating, but it is, however, emotionally distant. We know so little about each character, particularly our lead, that Nolan seems to be deliberately keeping them at arm's length. So while I was always amazed by what he was accomplishing within a frame, I didn't really care that much about the people that were filling that frame. Elizabeth Debicki's character is easily the most emotionally resonant of the entire film. There's a subplot that I won't spoil for you, but basically she's the heart and soul of the movie. And she's really all that John David Washington's character, which is just called the protagonist, he doesn't even have a name, She's really all that, that he's feeling for in the movie. And, and, and his real motivation for being in the movie seems wrapped up into helping her. And so as a lead, the protagonist isn't a particularly interesting character. He feels like an object that's used to communicate Nolan's story to us and less like a person. This is something that happens a lot in his films. In a movie like Inception, a lot of those characters are intriguing, but you know, you don't really know that much about them. The film just works a little bit better though because there is a central reason for Cobb being there and you understand why he's there. You understand why everyone is working towards a goal. In this movie, uh, Nolan deliberately keeps a lot of that from you until the end and even then once you experience a reveal of sorts, it absolutely recontextualizes the rest of the movie. It just doesn't really do it in a way that enhances the people. It enhances the plot. This is a very plot-heavy film. It's a, a plot over character movie without a doubt, and most of Nolan's films are. This one, though, is held up so much by an incredible amount of visual spectacle that is constantly exciting and different and new. It's another intriguing and fascinating film from one of our most daring filmmakers working within the mainstream system, and it will likely be enhanced by repeat viewings. However, I'm not going to a theater a second time right now to see a movie I've already seen. I'm gonna wait to see it again on Blu-ray, which I'm looking forward to doing. I'm gonna give Tenet a B plus. Speaking of new movies, uh, The New Mutants is apparently actually coming out this weekend. They finally did it, guys. They, they released that fucking movie. So I'll be seeing that. Hopefully I'm going to like a public Ooh, showing tomorrow. I don't know. I don't know. Before before all of this shit this year, I was a germaphobe. Now that has only been enhanced exponentially. So um, I'll do my best to get a new Mutants review out for you guys this weekend. For sure, I'm seeing Bill and Ted 3 because that's going to be on VOD streaming. So I'm looking forward to that, guys. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.